Our 2012 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Hey guys, Mike Perlman here in Las Vegas. I'm at the Pepcom event, I'm at the Nikon booth, and I'm looking at the Nikon D4. This is one of their highest end DSLRs on the market. And I'm hanging out with Lindsay Silverman from Nikon. How you doing, Mike? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Uh, this was introduced uh, just a couple of days ago on uh, January 6th. It is our new flagship DSLR, and it's called the D4. It is a, uh, a really a powerhouse of total imaging performance because it's not just a camera that shoots great stills, it's also a camera that has just an amazing amount of great HD video features for today's transitioning still photographer to video. So we got a brand new 16.2 megapixel FX format CMOS sensor. It's a Nikon design sensor and it, the increase from resolution over the D3 camera is about four megapixels. And the reason for that is that this type of camera has got to strike a balance between its imaging sensor performance, the speed of autofocus and burst rate, and total imaging package. What do we got for ISO sensitivity? Because I know the D3 is fantastic with its high ISO. What, what can we do with the D4? Right, we've expanded the ISO range over the D3 series camera. Where D3 went from 200 ISO up to 12,800, this starts at 100 and goes up to 12,800. So you get an additional stop of low light sensing. Then you can expand the low light to ISO 50, and you can expand the high ISO, which was already rather high at over 100,000, to now goes up to 204,800, which is kind of cool because that light level is so low, you can barely see in it. And because you can barely see in it, it makes the control of the camera somewhat difficult because there's not enough light. So now, D4, all of the important buttons on the camera are illuminated so that in low light, you can make the requisite controls that you need to make. Now, what are you doing for noise management at those high ISO levels? Well, we put a brand new image processor called XP3 in the camera. So the new XP3, together with everything else the camera's got in it, controls a myriad of features. It's got all of the still imaging features, it controls the video features, and especially a brand new noise reduction algorithm in the camera that, of course, has got to follow the legendary D3 series on its noise reduction, and I don't think it's going to disappoint anybody. Even with a slight gain in resolution, I think people are going to be quite blown away by the great noise reduction built into this camera. Now, what are we talking about for video? Ah, video is really where, where D4 is going to excel. Um, we've got 1080p, at 30p, at 25p, at 24p. It's got 720p at 60 frames per second and 50. But that's not where the camera ends. We've got a dedicated video live view button here. There are a lot of controls on this bad boy. I'm sorry, it took me long to get there. One of the new things is you've got peak meters for sound, so you can monitor sound visually. Plus, on the side of the camera, it's got a headphone jack. So you can actually plug headphones in and monitor the sound in isolation in up to 30 steps. Very important for someone who wants to record sound while they're recording video. Plus, this is the only camera that can do this. It's got three crop modes for video, and all of them give you 1080p. So FX format, of course, and you've got DX format. So if you want to gain a little bit of extra telephoto with a lens, you go to DX crop mode. Plus, it's got a brand new 2.7x crop mode. There is an HDMI output in the camera. When you go HDMI from the camera into an external monitor, you've got a feature we're calling simultaneous live view. It means that you can use the LCD of the camera to preview live view image. You can also use an external monitor to preview. So if someone is controlling the camera on a tripod, they can look at the camera to control it. If a focus puller is focusing and using an external monitor, they can look at it. And if you go HDMI out from the monitor into an external recorder, you can record uncompressed 4.2.2 video. What are we talking about price and availability? $59.99.95 for the body, uh, and it will be available sometime in mid to late uh, February. And then, I didn't, we didn't go over this, but on the camera itself, the same day we introduced the camera, we introduced a brand new AFS Nikkor 85mm f1.8 lens. A really fast aperture, medium uh, telephoto lens that's got all the virtues of our AFS system. Fast autofocus, silent autofocus, you can manually focus while you're in autofocus, and this is going to sell for $499.95. All right, so we've gotten our taste of 35 millimeter full frame glory in the Nikon D4. I've been talking with Lindsay Silverman. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right.
Check Techno Buffalo out for more camera news. I'm Mike Broman signing out. No one likes the difficulty and precision needed when parallel parking. But when you use the active park assist feature found on the Focus, you remove the stress by using ultrasonic sensors to identify an open parking spot. Pair this with the rear view camera and the car practically parks itself for you. Thanks to Ford for powering our CES coverage.